Hello everyone and welcome to Virtual Up Tech. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Firebat MN56. This is a small form factor mini PC that you can pick up over at AliExpress. Affiliate links will be down below. Clicking on those affiliate links really helps to support the channel. And so if you are considering buying one of these or even if it's something else, just clicking on them really helps out the channel. The overall build quality on this is pretty robust. It does have a metal body as well as some grills along here and over here for airflow so it sucks in air from the side from the left and right and then it gushes out the back it does have a laptop style cooler so don't expect this to be super quiet so on the front you do have a power button this is a clicky power button and it feels nice and clicky you've also got two usb 3 ports at the front then on the side, you do have the intake. And then on the other side as well, you've also got this intake, just a mesh covering, sucks in air from the sides and then just gushes it out the back. And then you've got this exhaust here on the back as well. It does take a DC um, power plug. It does not support USB power, but you do have a type C port on the back as well, which does display, uh, support audio and video out as well. Um, so you've got no problem doing 4K 60 or uh, or QHD 144Hz out of the display port um, Type-C. You've also got two HDMI 2.0 ports. They do support 4K 60Hz. You've also got a headphone jack and then you've got a Realtek um, Gigabit Ethernet um, port as well as another two USB 3.0 ports. On the back, you've just got the brand and the model number. Um, build quality is good. It is quite small and compact. So just comparing it to this Cyberbuck, uh, Cyberpunk mini PC. So it is quite a bit smaller. Um, my one did come with a US power plug and this is a 19V 3.42 amps, 64 or 65 watts. I do wish it came with a power brick that's I got the plug separate but this one you know, it's not that bad cable not the longest that i've seen but it will do i'm in the uk so i will be using an adapter talking of build quality the build quality on this is quite nice actually it is small so a hand for comparison but it feels solid and well built the top is made out of plastic it is a glossy plastic it means that you can if you really wanted to put objects on top it's not going to impede airflow or anything but i wouldn't really do that because the top does get hot so the heat sink is here just over here so the top does get quite hot the type of cooling that this uses is a laptop style you know blower fan so it's not that quiet um depending on what you do when you first start it up you're booting into desktop you know there is a little bit of hmm, humming sound if you power up a game if you power up youtube videos again it starts drawing in more power so the fan noise can start to ramp up a bit firebat does sell this with different SKUs, so i've got the version with the 5700u um, it's an amd ryzen cpu but you can also get it in other configurations the u stands for you know low low power ultra low power or, or ultra low voltage something like that um primarily designed for laptops but you can pick up mini pcs with this low powered CPU. It is eight cores and it does also have a um, Radeon graphics like built into it as well. So it can do a little bit of light gaming. Firebat do also sell this with a, um, I think a 5600H, which does use a newer Zen 3 CPU, but it's, it's only a six core variant. And um, if it comes in the same body as this, then you can expect that to be a little louder since that does have a higher TBT. So you could expect it to get warmer the 5700 user I have in this one, it takes 15 to uh, 25 uh, watts of power, um, total power draw. But the cool thing that I've noticed about this is you can go into the BIOS. Firebat would say, don't do it. If you mess with the BIOS, you would void your warranty. But if you wanted more performance, you can go into the BIOS and you can increase the um, TPD of the CPU. So I've got a 5700U. AMD um, recommend you go up to 25 watts, but you can go higher. Um, 
I comfortably set it to 35 watts over in the BIOS, and that does boost the performance. It makes it feel much more responsive. Your Cinebench, your gaming performance is also going to get higher. The fan does also get noisier, especially if you start using that extra power for demanding tasks. Um, but I would recommend that you do it. You can set it even higher to 40 or, or 50, but I wouldn't set it that high because the power brick is only 50, um, 65 watts. And the computer just has a tendency to restart if you set it too high because it just it this just, just doesn't uh, because this just doesn't supply sufficient enough power. But it's definitely worth going to the BIOS and just increasing it from the standard auto to 35 watts, and you would get a noticeable increase in performance. Temperatures would also go up if you do that, but with how scaling works, if you're not doing anything, then the total power draw is just going to be 5, 10 watts. So it's only when it needs that extra power, then you've got that extra headroom. When it comes to performance, it does depend on what you've set your total power draw to and also which CPU you have inside. Whether you have an ultra low voltage U series CPU or you get the more power hungry H series CPU. Um, for me, I think the best value is the 5700U that I picked up. This one does come with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte hard drive pre-installed. As it did come with the hard drive pre-installed, it also came included with a activated copy of Windows 11. And all the drivers and everything are just pre-installed, so you don't have to mess around with that. Powering this on isn't hard at all. You just plug in the barrel jack connector. Um, I will be using a portable monitor, which I've got over here. This is a QHD 144Hz 15.6 inch uh, 16 to 10 portable monitor from Vchance. Um, you can also pick this one up at AliExpress. And I'm going to be using a Type-C cable. Plug that in here. Plug that in here. So I have just signed in now, and this is a touchscreen display, which is actually working. So this is quite cool. So if I do just go on my website, this is where I'm posting articles and tech reviews. And again, not really a problem. Everything looks great. You can, of course, adjust the scaling if you think that the scaling is too high. Right now, it is just that it's default, but You can go into display settings and then yeah, it's at 200% if I just make it 150. There you go. And then 2560 by 1600 advanced display, 144 hertz, just to show you a bit closer. So it's really not a problem. It handles it quite well. And 4K video playback is also not a problem. So I did also want to run Cinebench on this just to show you the type of performance you can get. And having a look over here, you do have the this back up you do have the uh, gpu power draw which is really just the tbt right now it's only three watts but if i press start you will just see this jumping up to 27 and right now it is set to auto so it should stabilize at around yep so it has started to stabilize at 25 watts what i have found is when it does come to performance um if you keep it on auto the tbt would default to about 25 watts peak but it would come lower even if there's more thermal headroom. This is why I would really advise you go into the BIOS. Again, you will avoid your warranty if you do this, but just go into the BIOS and just bump up the TBT to 35 watts. It does have the thermal capacity to cool it. 
when you do set it to 35 watts, you do get about 130 point difference um, on the Cinebench score. And even just opening tabs, flicking through windows, op uh, opening that view tube, it does feel uh, snappier if you just increase the TVT. Fan noise is acceptable. Um, don't expect this to be super, super quiet. It is not passively cool and it doesn't have a big fan. It is a laptop style fan. But, you know, it, it's okay. I'll say that the noise and the sound profile is comparable to a laptop. So if you're okay with laptop noise, then you shouldn't have a problem with this. But being a mini PC, for me, if you are getting a computer or a mini PC, just being quieter than a laptop is nice. Um, and this isn't really quieter than a laptop. It's about the same level as a laptop. The single channel RAM is a bit of a bottleneck and it does support dual channel. You do have an extra dim slot of, um, that's empty. Um, I would have liked to see two times eight gigabytes, but they have just included one times 16 gigabytes. It does run at 3200 megahertz. So if you are picking this one up, one of the first upgrades that you can do besides the hard drive is just slot in another 16 gigabyte RAM stick, 3200 megahertz, and yeah, the system will feel more responsive. And this can also give you a boost in gaming performance. Overall, I think this is actually terrific value right now, especially on AliExpress. You can see the links down below as it is using the older 5700U, you know, the older SKU. I think now Ryzen is at 7000 and even 8000 series. So it is using the older processor, but this older processor is still very, very capable. You know, it's more powerful than the Intel N100s. Um, Yep, it's um, the when I increased the TBT to this to um, 35 volts um, on Cinebench, it was actually outperforming the i7 1260p. So this does still have a lot of, uh, so this does still carry a lot of performance, and you can pick this up at a great price now. If you want to use this for 4K video playback, not a problem. YouTube, not a problem. Any resolution, not a problem. For handling Excel, Word documents, you know, everyday general use, not a problem. It is a very capable machine. Giving this to a kid for their schoolwork, not a problem. For coding, light programming, not a problem. For gaming, uh, I wouldn't really buy this for gaming unless you're into retro gaming or you're just playing very old games. But compared to similar Intel processors like the 11th or 1260p, and um, this is this offers more performance. It does have a more capable IGPU inside. So just taking a look at the BIOS screen over here, it is running American Mega Threads and yeah, Ryzen 7 5700U, 16 gigs DDR4 memory. Um, it does come with a single DIMM slot, so it's not running in dual channel. If you do want to increase the TBT, you want to go into Advanced, AMD, CVS, NBIO common, SMU, and then system configurations. Change it from default to 35 watts. Don't go to 45 or 54. Um, it will just, again, it does work, but if you end up doing any demanding application, it will just restart. I do think this is a great buy, and compared to the Intel N100 machines that you're getting, this is, this is definitely faster. It's got more performance. It's just better at everything, so. No, it's not a bad PC. 